In this video, we're going to be looking at what is a solvent. A solvent is any substance which dissolves another substance. So the substance that's actually being dissolved is called the solute and the liquid or the substance dissolving uh, another substance is called the solvent. Both mixed together, a solute and a solvent makes a solution. A good example, which over here you might do this at home, is you get a teaspoon of sugar. Now the sugar is the solute and water is the solvent. If you mix it in the water, the water is the solvent, the sugar is the solute, and both together, when dissolved, becomes the solution. If you have something like salt and um, sand and water, sand will not actually make a connection with water. It will not mix in. For that reason, it's a mixture. It is not a solution. Now, water and alcohol are commonly used solvents, particularly for use in products that are applied to the skin or ingested by people. Now, water is amazingly versatile and we honestly take it for granted. Just looking at the water molecule here, we know that there's, it's H2O, there's two hydrogens and an oxygen. So there's the water molecule over there. And water is able to make a bond with something. It reacts with something, but when it does react, it doesn't make a large reaction. And for this reason, we use it as a universal solvent. So an example of water on skin is a moisturizer. Now, when you put moisturizer on, it might be left. And when it's left, it kind of feels wet. For that reason, we actually know the base of that moisturizer is water. If you use an alcohol, so an example of an alcohol as a solvent is sanitizer. When you get hand sanitizer and you rub it on your skin, you don't need water. And it's a cleaning mechanism, but within you know 20 seconds, the alcohol is actually dried off. So if it dries really fast, that's how we know that it's alcohol as a solvent instead of water. Most times, it's water that is used as a solvent because it does not react with anything and it's able to dissolve solutes very easily. For that reason, oil is not a very good solvent because it will not dissolve things. If you want, you can try that experiment at home. Water is a polar molecule. Now it's shown by positive and negative structures. So polar means that it's charged and it's got a positive at one end and negative at the other end. It's very similar to magnets. So here we have a water molecule again. The red is the oxygen and the blue circles here are hydrogens. The hydrogen ions attached actually have a slightly positive charge and the oxygen has a slightly negative charge. So for that reason, there's two different ends and because they're polar, it means that they're more easily, readily to react with substances to dissolve. Polar molecules are more happy to mix with other substances. So it's a unit, water is a universal solvent and we use it in so many ways and we don't even know it. So just having a look, in everyday life, we use water as a solvent for making tea or coffee. We use it in showering and using soap. We use water for gardens, we water gardens and it is a medium for nutrients to be absorbed into the plants. And also for us, actually drinking water helps our blood maintain a good consistency. Without water, our blood becomes thicker. With water, our blood becomes thinner and it's easier for nutrients to move around our body. We use water to cook with and it's the base of most soups as well. So we use water also to clean the house with, um, adding cleaning products to these to water to clean the house. Water is essential for life. It makes up between 70% and 90% of living organisms. Without water, we would not survive. Water is recognized as the universal solvent in which most substances dissolve and is the transport medium for distributing them. So Water is an extremely important solvent as it dissolves necessary substances. It dissolves sugar and gases that are needed, especially in the human body. But also, water does not react with any one of these substances. Now, if you chose vinegar, for example, and you got bicarb soda, and you can do this one at home too. If you use vinegar as the solvent, 
bicarb will dissolve, but it actually fizzes. So if you put a teaspoon of bicarb into a little bit of vinegar, it actually rises and creates bubbles. In this reaction, it also, the glass, what you put it in, will turn cold. So it produces a few reactions there. But water does not actually react. It just dissolves substances, and that's why it's very important. Over here, we have a beaker full of water, and it's got um, potassium permanganate, which is a chemical in this water. If you left that, it would actually diffuse after two hours. Okay, so if you left the potassium permanganate in, and that's colouring the water there. Water is able to transport gases like carbon dioxide and oxygen, wastes such as urea, nutrients in limited amounts such as salt and vitamins, and sugar in the form of glucose to other parts of the body, for example, muscles, organs, or excretion. So if you have hormones to get around, it actually goes through your blood system. Same with all of these. And what's amazing about your blood is it's recycled. We don't make new blood every day. Your blood is actually recycled. Yes, we do, our red blood cells do die every, every day. They're dying and we replenish them. But it, the blood is actually recycled. And this blood is mostly made up of water. So blood plasma is made up of 90% of water. Water is essential for all the cell's reactions. Many of these reactions only occur when the two reacting substances are dissolved in water. Seeds will not germinate unless there's a tiny bit of water there. So if you've got a seed and just put it out on a plate, it will not actually germinate. It will not grow. If you've got the same seed and put uh, some water around it, just in water the seed might be able to grow. Also, within the cell, water is still necessary for transport and move substances around the cell. In plant cells, water is necessary in making the cell turgid, which means stiff. What this actually means is that the cell is its full capacity and filled with water. If the cell is not filled with water, you'll actually find that it's not turgid or stiff, which means that the actual plant might droop or wilt. So those cells need more water. If you're not feeding your plants enough water, they will wilt and they will die if you do not give them any water. But if you give them a little bit of water, the cells become turgid again, which means that they expand to their maximum size. If plants are not watered, they will become flaccid. Now, flaccid is the other term for wilted. Water balance is crucial. Living organisms try to ensure that the water balance is maintained in their cells and the concentration of solutes is held constant so that the cells can function properly. We have here a picture of red blood cells and red blood cells when placed in a salt solution, especially a very salty solution, will shrink and shrivel. That's why you shouldn't actually drink salt water. If, you have, if you're thirsty, never drink salt water. It does this to your cells. Now, if you get these same cells and place them in pure distilled water, they can actually swell and burst. That's why you need a happy medium and why both salt and water is important in your diet. Too much water in animal cells and they'll explode. Another word of that is called lysed. So the cell actually dies. As soon as it explodes, the cell dies. Too little water and shells, cells will shrink and die. So in summary, transport in multicellular animals is necessary to move nutrients and waste around the body. This occurs in a watery medium, which is usually blood or lymph fluid. Water is the universal solvent to dissolve many substances. These dissolved substances can be involved in chemical reactions within the cells and can be transported within organisms. Cells may be damaged if there's too much or not enough water. This concludes looking at water as a universal solvent.